Hey guys, welcome to Brains Out Loud. Today we have Gabby Bertez here and she's a model. She's also really passionate about mental health and she's a personal friend of mine. So Gabby, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Of course. And I know you're always booked and busy. This is super special that you made it here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? So I was born and raised in New Jersey. Um, I'm half Argentinian and half Ecuadorian. Um, currently living in Los Angeles, California, and I moved here when I was 18 years old. And I started modeling when I was about 15. Let's talk a little bit about how you got scouted. And then we'll kind of take it back to mental health. So my sister actually bought me a ticket to a fashion show in New York. And I was just kind of just going there with her and not thinking anything of it. And then I think it was a designer, someone from like backstage came up to me and was like, are you one of the models? And I was like, no, like all nervous. And then I was booked pretty much the rest of the week for shows in New York. And then I opened up at the Lincoln Center. And then it just started from there. That's literally people's <laughs> dreams for that to happen. Like, it's such a good story. <laughs> what about growing up? What was that like for you? You've known me since high school, but I've been through a lot of trauma, you know, even before high school. And I think it comes from like a lot of my, my like inner family. I think from like my father, my parents got divorced when I was like eight years old. And it was just hard, you know, not having a male figure in your life, you know, not having a father in general is hard. Then my mom was basically both. She was a father and a mother and raised me a little bit. And then she got sick. So your mom passed away three years ago. How have you dealt with the grief? I've never seen a more traumatic thing in my whole entire life. Like, you know, being with someone every day and then seeing them pass the way that I did, it was very traumatizing for me, especially at a young age. I mean, I was only 20 years old when she died and she, she passed away from cancer. It was hard for me because she was my mom and, and my father all put into one. And, and to see like basically both parents passing that day, it, it really did hit me. Every year, I always feel like it's gonna get easier and it usually never does. What's getting me by, honestly, is my boyfriend. <laughs> He's definitely has helped, you know, a lot with griefing. And like, he also was born the same day my mother passed away, which brought me like so much closer to him. I felt like I had a connection with him because of it, but he's definitely helped me, you know, focus on being happy and, and focus on other things that, that are important in life that I feel like, you know, are, is really helping me grow up more. Um, and going through the whole grief thing, it's just, it's very, very hard, you know, dealing with not having a parent. When you have another support system in a sense of you find it someone else, you know, that, that definitely helps. I also don't view that day as negative as I used to. You know, I have a reason to like switch it around and, and make it happier because, because of him. Such a good sign from your mom too, that that's his birthday. It was crazy how when like he first told me, like my whole face dropped. I was like, what? <laughs> but I was like, I didn't even think he was said it right. I was like, are you sure that's the day? He was like, yeah. I was like, okay. Like, wow. I'm like, wow. But it gave me chills in like the best way. It was like my first time last year celebrating with him. And I threw him like this whole party or whatever. But it was just so nice. Not saying that I want to completely forget the day but I'm saying that like it was nice to, to not just be completely sad on that day and, and focus my energy on something that's positive do you talk about your grief well I'm emotional <laughs> I'm trying not to even cry right now but I cry like so much that like I just like to cry things out so if I ever like feel sad I like to just cry for like 10 minutes or I'll go through photos of like her and I I'll even replay voicemails that I have from her and it's like her yelling at me <laughs> saying that I'm spending too much money <laughs> but you know she she was just the best mom so she was also like not just my mom she was like the best friend when you're living her legacy you're out there pursuing what you want to do not letting the world like give you shit I feel like that's what your mom was all about was her independence. Yeah. I mean, I moved out here when I was 18. So I definitely wanted to like show her that I had some sort of 
stability that I was able to like do life, you know, and, and her not to be worried, but she was always worried about me, always, always, you know, telling people to look after me. And uh, I feel like even till this day, like a lot of people that were there for me then that dealt with the whole situation of her being sick are still there for me now. So I'm just really appreciative for the people that stuck around. I still can't believe that happened to her and to you. It's just not fair. Yeah. And I think that we also don't realize, like, I feel like you also regret a lot of things. Like I regret the way I used to like be always saucy and like always do malicious things or, but also I was young and I was naive and I wasn't, I wasn't as not saying that I'm so put together now because I'm not, but I I'm trying to at least deal with and, and not be who I once was, which was like that whole, you know, stubborn, bratty girl. Now I'm more of like, okay, like you can't act like that. Like a kid, like forever, you have to grow up. You have to, you know, realize this is life. This isn't like a fake fairy tale (laughs) you've matured so much you don't have to feel regret but naturally I'm sure there's things that come into your head just a lot of wasted time in my opinion I don't like live in regret I just I just always replay situations where I feel like I wish I could act differently but you know now I know moving forward to just not act like that in other situations towards other people that I care about and I'm trying not to so Um, It's definitely a learning experience. You've come so far and grief is so hard. It never gets easier. You just kind of get used to it and you learn to cope. And I'm I'm very blessed to even live in LA. You know, a lot of people always dream to be in California. You know, I've I've wished to move here when I was in sixth grade. I would always be like, I cannot wait to get out of (laughs) here. I was just not vibing with that weather. I was just like, no, this is not for me. And And once you like finally make your dream into reality and like you keep going with that dream, it's just like you have that urge to just not stop. Yeah, it fuels it. So then you'll just keep going for sure. Now I'm kind of just, you know, by myself in LA. All my family's still in New Jersey. That's why you're like so independent. But how did you get that way to now where you're so like mentally strong and like on your own? I think ever since my mom passed away, which was about like three years ago, it kind of thrown me into the world in a sense of like, I kind of have to like find my own way. And I think it really brought me into a sense of I have to be strong for myself, you know, and protect myself and, and try and have, you know, an open mind to things. But, you know, I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing half the time, but day by day, I'm slowly thinking I can do it so well you're always like figuring it out and I feel like you have people to lean on to in your life that kind of help you through you felt me a lot so yeah that's that's not really helpful with friends and stuff no same seriously modeling obviously is your main passion and pursuit how has that affected your mental health obviously it's super competitive oh gosh yeah I think Instagram is it's taken a big toll on like everyone that I know in a sense of this industry because like you're constantly comparing yourself and like my biggest thing is like I need to stop comparing myself to another model you know like they're on their own path for a reason I just need to understand that I'm on my own and yeah I just not take things personally and if I don't get a job it's okay I may not be the the type that they want at the time or maybe in a few months or it just, it all depends with clients and what they like and what their brand is and what they're trying to go for. So I may not be that type in that moment, but I could be in that type in like two months from now, which is, it really varies. Yeah. Well, it's always like leading yeah. you to the next thing. Like any experience probably yeah. is still like, there's a takeaway. Right. Yeah. Do you have any horror stories from being in the industry? Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot, but it's actually funny that you say that because I was just having this conversation because I had a test shoot this morning downtown in LA and the photographer and I were talking and she was just asking me my previous life too about like what's the most chaotic thing I've been in and I, I think it's because my old agencies were very hard on me to lose weight I think that was something that really messed up my mind in a sense of like oh I kept thinking that like I wasn't good enough for my body type and now everyone's telling me I'm too skinny and like before they were like lose 10 pounds unless you want me to sign you it's 
it's very up and down emotions. <laughs> so, so now I'm finally confident in my body and now they're telling me that I'm too skinny. So I can never win, but it is what it is. <laughs> At least fitness is a big outlet for you, right? Yeah, I work out a lot, which helps a lot too. Sometimes like I don't, I don't work out anymore to like lose weight. I work out for my own mental state. Um, I box a lot, it releases a lot of anger, whatever I'm feeling that day in a healthy, in a healthy way. <laughs> How do you deal with rejection? Like you're booking all the time, but when you don't get the gig, like how do you move past it? You know, they'll always hit me up, like my agents and be like, oh, you're on hold for a job. And then if I don't hear anything, I'm just like waiting. Like, I'm like, okay, like, do they like me? I don't know. And you'll never know until like, you'll, you'll know if they'll, they want you, but you won't know if they don't want you. So they won't be like, oh yeah, by the way, they don't want you. You're just kind of sitting there like a sitting duck and you're just like, okay, well, I guess I didn't get the job. But honestly, like even to this day, I, I, I struggle. I'm not going to lie. I struggle all the time with rejection, but I just need to, to feel confident within myself and know that I'm good enough for myself. And, and if they don't want me, then that's okay. I just can't take it personally again. So I just have to just roll with it and, you know, move forward. So what do you do to take care of your mental health? A year ago, I was struggling a lot mentally and like I got a dog (laughs) and now um, I'm living with my boyfriend, but so we have two dogs and it's a Husky and a Pomeranian and they're the best because they honestly make me feel so much better because I always have to walk them like five times a day and like it forces me to get out when like I usually wouldn't, you know? So I just feel like, you know, even small walks are like, going around with your dog hiking or doing something with nature really helps me a lot. Yeah. And you have tons of stuff in LA that you can do outside and like just having a companion, like a a dog is so helpful. Yeah. I love it because it's constantly sunny here. So there's always, there's always something to do. And the two dogs get along. They're so cute. (laughs) I know it's so random because the giant Husky and a small Pomeranian, it's just the funniest mix. I love that though. What advice would you give to someone who wants to enter the industry? Wow. I guess it would probably be the biggest thing is to not take anything personally. I know it's as hard as I keep saying that, like to not take anything personally, to not take anything personally, but like you really cannot let it get to you because the more you let it get to you, the more it's just going to eat you up inside and the more you're just going to not get out of this funk. And like, I just highly suggest to just you know, even if you don't feel confident in the moment, you know, fake it till you make it type, you know, like just keep going. And um, my girlfriend would always be like, you know, if you fall seven times, you you stand up eight. So, you know, just got to keep, keep doing that. What about with the agents that have been critical? Do you take that and try to change? Or are you just kind of like, well, I'm going to stay with who I am and do what's healthy for me? Right. So um, in my past experience with my old agents, now that I'm not with them anymore, those are the ones who are kind of like very negative in a sense of like, you have to lose the weight, you have to lose the weight. Now it's like the opposite, but um, they're not in my life anymore for those reasons, because I kind of just wanted to like, not be around people that are negative. And also they would say the nastiest things. Like I would post something like pizza, for example, and then they would comment like, treat yourself to a cute new top, not this. Like they were so aggressive. And usually agents are supposed to be very like family oriented. You're supposed to like be able to like call them and be like, this is what happened today or whatever, you know, like come to them kind of like a friend. And I felt like I didn't have that with my other agents. And now that I do, I just think it's just so important to have like a family oriented agency that rides for you and you know it's it's a equal understanding yeah you work for each other they should be supporting you and they want you to win so that they win exactly you guys are a team at the end of the day you know you guys are making each other money so it's like a equal understanding of how you guys just need to just work you know in a positive way and, and not a negative way so I just think that that's really important especially in a work environment Yeah. I'm glad you spoke up and like got away from those other agents because a lot of people could literally like develop eating disorders or like self-harm or really like go down a dark path from that. Yeah. I mean, there was even a point where like, I was not even eating, like I would be fasting and then I would just have like this like apple diet where (laughs) I would just eat apples. And like, I thought that was, you know, normal. Um, But now 
you know, I actually eat very, very healthy. <laughs> My boyfriend cooks for me every night. So, um, and he's very disciplined, which taught me to be very disciplined. And he is, he's very educated in nutrition and he helped me understand a lot of things that I didn't even know how to read things like on packages. Like I didn't know what added sugar was like, <laughs> I was like, what added sugar? And he's like, that's so bad. Like, you know, so, um, you know, as you get older, you, you learn more things and you understand things more. Nutrition so important. And it's, crazy that before you were barely eating versus now even the food that I see that you and your boyfriend make it's like very well balanced and plus <laughs> you guys work out like five times a day before 7 a.m like I don't know how <laughs> <laughs> yeah this man is an early bird and he's a fitness love bird he just loves to be in the gym so it you know that that's what attracted me a lot to him you know we we vibed on that wavelength of working out together and um, he definitely pushes me and motivates me, he definitely gets me out of bed when I don't feel like getting out of bed. So it's always good to have also a partner that really rides for you too. Clearly you guys want the same thing. So you can be in a good routine together for sure. Which I do have friends that like eat pretty bad and I'm like, mm, should I eat bad? <laughs> I'm like, should I have one French fry? I'll definitely have one, but not anymore. Will I be like stuffing my face? <laughs> Yeah. for no reason <laughs> and another thing is like I don't drink at all anymore I cut out alcohol like completely like I, no. I if I do have one drink it would probably be for like a special reason like I would definitely have one or two drinks if it's like a girlfriend's birthday or something like important but I just wouldn't drink to just drink anymore like before I used to like just go to the club and whatever but now I'm more of like nah I just I'm good <laughs> what made you cut it out it was mainly because I chose not to because it just kind of was delayed me a lot and made me very sluggish the next day and like you can't really do much you don't wake up and it's just kind of disturbing you know into your days so I just kind of cut it out that's good it just slows yeah. you down yeah I mean like I said if my friends are drinking I definitely will have one drink I just won't get like hammered you know to the point yeah. where like I have like an aching headache the next day it's just not very fun for me boundaries in adulthood <laughs> but I know crazy you're part of the Latina community what is that like as a model well my mother was born in Ecuador and my father's born in Argentina so I'm 50 50 and you know, I think, I think it's doing really well. I think that a lot of people are really like proud to be Latin nowadays. And I think that's something that's really important. I just, I feel like I should practice more on my Spanish. I've been at, at, with anything, if you don't practice it, it leaves you. And I feel like I was definitely more fluent when I was younger, but I can definitely still hold up a conversation and know when, when someone's talking bad about me. <laughs> But I just think it's really important in the industry now because even in Miami, for example, like if you have a job or you go somewhere, it's like a lot of people speak Spanish there. So it's like you can definitely use that to your advantage. And so I'm actually on this casting website and it's called Casting Network. And you basically can put like where you're from, like if you're Hispanic or, you know, Latin and your, your age range. And then they usually actually pick off of where you're from and um, just for the type of roles that they're looking for. We definitely need to see more just representation in general. I think that's important. You know, you should be proud from where you're from and not, and not hide it. Definitely. And it probably gives you an advantage. Part of why you're so gorgeous is where you're from. Like <laughs> that's what makes you beautiful, you know? Oh, I love you. <laughs> keep going, keep going. No. <laughs> How should a model's day look? in terms of like managing their mental health and like being prepared to be put on the spot. It's a lot. Your confidence like is the biggest thing too, is just like how you walk into a room, you know, like everyone's staring at you. If you're walking into a casting, like how are you feeling that day? Like your energy is definitely seen when you walk into a casting and like definitely, I feel like casting directors definitely feed off of that. So like the energy that you're giving is the energy that they're receiving. And then they'll be like, okay, like I'm gonna book you because of that, you know, or whatever, because of your look or because of your energy, whatever. And I think that's just really important that, you know, you try and not let, like, even if you're having a bad day, like don't show it, you know, like you have to just really, really, really just walk in there and be 
be yourself, but be known that everyone's watching you. So you can't be sad or you can't be down. You just, you just have to smile and know that, that you can go through it afterwards, but not in front of them. Yeah. So just fake so, it. Yeah. 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 I get like a lot of people go through things and it's so random to like, not also to just shut out your feelings is really hard, especially when you like walk into a casting or whatever but you, you kind of just have to, because, you know, if you're angry and you take that out on them per se, you know, then you may not get that job because of it. If you get booked on like a job, you want to like definitely leave like a footprint, you know, like when you, when you're there, you don't want to be giving attitude. You want to be, you know, appreciative, thankful that you're there, you know, don't take it for granted, you know, leave good energy when you leave the workplace. So they remember you, you know, and I think that's really important. And my, even my boyfriend does that. He does that in his training. <laughs> it's just so good to just leave good energy everywhere because people love that. And who doesn't love good energy? So yeah. yeah, it just spreads. It's contagious. Do you have any rituals like that you do before you go on set or things that get you in the zone? Well, I have to drive a lot when I go to castings and in LA, there's so much traffic. So I usually just like blast hip hop music. <laughs> I get so like into the or whatever music I want that day I just like blast it and then I like walk in there and I feel definitely more confident or if I have to take an uber I'll just put my headphones in and just blast it so I feel somewhat you know sane <laughs> that I'm like or I do I always do the sign of the cross <laughs> I always do that before too when I leave the um plane because I get scared but I do that too when I <laughs> <laughs> when I walk um in front of people or like I I just get so nervous you get like that tingling stomach feeling you're just like I'm scared but you're okay <laughs> how is it interacting with other models it's funny that you say that because no some models don't even care if they're on set like they'll still be like their sassy self like and if I vibe with someone it, it's you know, sometimes it is a model or it could be like one model and not the other. It doesn't like vibe with me. You're just like, all right, well, I just won't talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Move on to the other girl, you know, but um, I could always try and be nice. And if they choose, you know, to not be or not even be on my wavelength, then I'm just like, okay, all right. And, you know, <laughs> and just go talk to people on set or, you know, mind my own business. But there's a lot of, I mean, I don't want to, say every model is like that but there's some that are just very um entitled and and they know that they can get you know jobs whenever they want so they just feel like they you know take it for granted but me personally like any job I get I'm just like oh my god thank god I got a job you know like so I'm just thankful that um the people that are a lot of people that are usually on set with me are actually very sweet you know but um if it's like a model that just you know, is on there just being sassy. I just kind of like brush it off. And I'm just like, all right, well, I just choose not to talk to you. <laughs> and there was a girl on a set and she was, I guess, like rushing. I guess she had to leave set early, but she was just being very like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. Like very, like I have to do this fast type of way. And we're all just like, okay, like whack, you know? And then she, I guess she was like very stressed. So you could definitely see that. And then she just started getting attitude to a lot of people. So it may be, it could be, you know, anything and they could be going through something that we don't know and, and, and that's fine. But, you know, just when you're in a work environment, you kind of just don't want to ever bring that there or you at least try not to. How is social media with the modeling industry? The only reason I'm on TikTok is honestly because, you know, as a model, you're supposed to stay with like the trends. And I used to make fun of TikTok and like now I'm on it. Like it's... It's just so funny because you kind of just want to keep up with what everyone's doing. And, and honestly, I've been realizing that if you create an audience on TikTok, it'll just transfer over to your Instagram, which I've been seeing. So I was like, wow, like the algorithm's really crazy on here. Um, so that's why I keep, you know, try posting, try to keep up with it just so it can transfer to my Instagram and, and just grow a bigger audience in general and all, all of my platforms together social media in general is just so 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 draining sometimes I won't post for like a week or like two weeks because I'm just like ah oh, like it doesn't go with my page like I like I like things a certain way and like I like aesthetic so if like it doesn't like flow in in the way that I like it 
then I'm just like, okay, I won't post. So I'll wait till I find a better photo or if I get a better photo. And I'm just kind of like always thinking that I could do better. But at the end of the day, I was also just telling my boyfriend this, that, you know, we need to stop overanalyzing everything on social media and just like, if we want to post it, we'll post it. And if it looks good, it looks good. But like, I need to also stop overthinking it and just kind of do. So now I'm, I'm trying to, to plan more. And I want to be able to like plan my days of when I'll post and the times I'll post. So it's more efficient because I'm all over the place, but it's a lot, you know, it, it messes with me. And like, I try also not to compare myself to like other models or other people that are, you know, maybe doing better, I guess, than me or it's okay. You know, I need to know that my time will come. I'm even thankful to even be where I am today and in the position that I am, you know, a lot of people don't even have any agency, you know, that are still trying to model and still trying to like do pursue their, their passion into this. So I'm thankful that I even have a lot of people on my side and, and that believe me. So I always try to be that supportive friend instead of judging They're like, Oh, she got that job. I can't believe that. No, I'm, I'm more so like, oh, she's on Vogue. Oh my God, I'm going to post her on my story and be like, yo, you're on Vogue. You know, like I will be your hype man. You know, I'm not the, op- if you're my friend, at least I'll be your hype man. But obviously there's other models on Instagram that I'm like, okay, like they're doing whatever. And I'm like, eh, I feel like I could do better, you know, but it just, it feeds me. Like um, it just motivates me to, to keep going and, and it makes me want it more, honestly. I also try to not go on Instagram as much. I feel like I've been more on TikTok, honestly, because I feel like you just be more yourself on there. Yeah, like no one's judging you as hard as Instagram. I feel like everyone's like, oh, you have this perfect life. Or like, you know, on TikTok, you're just kind of like, oh, I can be goofy. Cool, you know? But for us as models, like our Instagram is kind of like our portfolio, you know? So like sometimes clients want to look at our Instagram and be like, oh, what is she posting? You know, and then we'll book you off of that. So that's why it's also hard for me to not not post because I know it's just going to affect me if I'm not like showing what I'm doing constantly. Yeah, you have to have that aesthetic. It's so interesting how TikTok is like safer. Instagram right. is so intense that we like put off posting, like, post and delete. Yeah. Like, there's so yeah. much that goes into it. Yeah, it's true. And it's also just like based off photos, which I know that I'm hearing YouTube, I mean, not YouTube, sorry. Instagram is trying to change their algorithm where it's like only videos. And like now everyone's trying to like save their TikToks and like put it on their Instagram, and, like going back and forth. But honestly, I just feel like regardless, TikTok, I could just, you know, be myself more than Instagram. Eventually, I definitely want to do like a YouTube channel too. Like I want to be able to like talk more in the camera like this. I'm, I usually actually get very shy. <laughs> I don't really yeah. like doing anything like this because I get very nervous and I also just hate my voice. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm happy that I'm able to even you know, get on here and do it with you and do it with someone that I actually love. So oh, yeah. I love you too, but <laughs> you should do more like speaking stuff, dude, because you're articulate. People will probably look at you and like, think you have it all figured out and think it, everything's perfect. And then to just hear you speak and like, you're just a normal, compassionate person. It's more relatable. So you should definitely do more stuff like this and go for the YouTube. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the big other platform that I'm definitely going to work on. It's just so many things to juggle. I'm like, wow, like how does any influencer able to do all of these platforms at once? It's just mind boggling to me. I just crazy, but um, yeah. I'll get through it. I'll definitely, you know, understand it more, but there's so much that goes into it. And some people have managers that help them with it too. So the fact that you're just like doing this all yourself and like your aesthetic looks as good as it does. It's hours of, you know, planning hours of like, like going through different things and seeing what looks good. I mean, I also took photography class in high school, which helped a lot. <laughs> yes. <to> you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also love photography. I also like love um, shooting on I love doing film recently. My brother bought me a film camera for my birthday. So I've been doing a lot of film and like, I love developing photos and not being able to see them like until they're developed. And like, it's just, all of it's just so cool to me. Like that whole vintage vibe. So I also love that a lot too. What would be end game for you in terms of modeling? Like what's your dream job? 
before I was like the Victoria's Secret one ratio, right? And now everyone's like so against that because of, you know, the body positivity and things. And I understand, but I, I just feel like as a model, like everyone's end game was that, that runway show. And now that that's gone, you're kind of just like, all right, well, what's next, you know, as a model. But my biggest thing is definitely, I want to definitely shoot for Vogue. I think that that would be insane. So I definitely also, right now I'm signed in a couple of cities in the United States, but I definitely want to branch off to Europe. And um, that's my other big goal next for me. So, um, but the end game, I definitely want to transfer into acting eventually. I definitely want to act. I think that would be a great transition um, from modeling to acting, but I know I can't just jump into acting. It takes years of practice. So So I'm definitely going to start now, but I could see you acting even your TikToks and stuff when you're like mouthing and acting out stuff, like you have strong facial expressions, even in that. (laughs) So I feel like use your film camera, have someone film you do like some boss, like lawyer dialogue. I could also see you like play younger too. Yeah. Like Like gossip girl or something. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like something like that. (laughs) Definitely. The last thing I want to end this on is just, where are you now? Where, where do you want to be in terms of like your mental strength and wellness? If I just keep going on the path of like continuing to work out, continuing to eat healthy, continuing to like pick the healthy choices in my life, then it will definitely make me feel better mentally. The energy that you're around is so important. I need to have good energy in my life. And also just want to be able to like thrive I want to be like, you know what? I am happy and like actually mean it. I want to be proud of who I am today and take things day by day. No, not everything is going to be perfect. Gab, where can people find you? At Gabrielle underscore Bertez. And it's literally the same for my TikTok. So. Well, thank you, Gab, again for being here. I think a lot of people will relate to it and probably be inspired too. Love you. Thank you for having me. And for people who don't know this, I've known Kelly for like 10 years. She's literally been there for me through so much in my life. Like, it's crazy. Like, she helped me so much, (laughs) even in my mental health. So I'm just so happy that I was able to do this for you and for me even. Like, I've never even done a podcast before. So so I really appreciate you inviting me. (laughs) No, we go way back. It's really cool, like, watching you grow up and everything. And coming on this, I hope it opens doors because you need to do more podcasts. You need to pick up your phone and just make videos talking you're not just a pretty face and amazing body. You also like have a lot to share and people need to hear your voice. So thank you again, Gabby, for being here. That was another episode of Brains Out Loud. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.